Caddis Maximus here this time with the review of the Night Star CS. There's actually uh, only a couple videos on YouTube about these lights, although I seem to uh, run in these pretty often. This is the slightly newer generation, although they're like 10 years old. They still sell them. Used to be applied InnoTech. These are a shake light, and the applied InnoTech ones, and they've changed their name, the website redirects. Uh, was the best of these shake lights or electromagnetic or magnetic induction lights. Uh, these were made possible by the invention of supercapacitors, which are very low voltage but extremely high capacity capacitors. One farad, five volt capacitor. And so that was the deal. You had a capacitor that had a reasonable amount of storage, and being a capacitor, it'll have decades of life. And so they can make this completely sealed, and you can have a flashlight like this, which is rated for 150 feet of depth or 50 meters diving. Uh, it's a polycarbonate body. You know, they are extremely tough, especially these CS ones. That diving means that they're hermetically sealed, and actually the on and off switch is a magnetic type switch. And so I get these. Uh, to take apart, to get the nice quality neodymium rare earth magnets out of them, the little magnetic switches, and the supercapacitor. The problem with these lights is they don't really work. If they've been dead for a while, you have to like shake it up for minutes and minutes and minutes to kind of get the, the capacitor to prime. They are, I mean, they're it's almost no light output compared to any kind of a modern flashlight easiest way to put it and so they've completely fallen off but a lot of people like the idea of a flashlight that you could shake and charge and they are pretty neat because they have two additional rare earth magnets at each end so that the large one can actually kind of bounce back and forth it's pretty how these work is really simple you have a magnet passing through a coil of wire that generates a, a electrical current in the wire comes up through the little threads into a little circuit board here there's a little a uh, diode on there so when the magnet goes back and forth it's generating AC and the capacitor of course needs DC so there's a little uh, cir actually I think it's a little circuit so it'll charge in both passes and it actually has a lens type uh, reflector or not a reflector it has a reflector with an actual lens so it has a really nice coverage area too bad it's just super incredibly dim but it has some really nice parts in it these were 20 bucks Everything was actually great. They used some really nice components. These little magnetic switches are uh, really neat to use for projects. And yes, that is actually a switch. It's a low power, very low current switch that could only really operate something like an LED. But of course, you can drive a transistor and have it operate anything. And the great thing is, is it can be worked through a completely sealed surface. So I've always liked those. Anyway, I know how to charge these up pretty quick. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration of that. It actually involves one of these tools. This is my shake accelerator tool. Just a moment here while I get this set up. Okay, so the real issue with these flashlights, besides the low energy storage, is it takes a lot of your effort. They say 30 minutes of shaking at 4 shakes per second for 20 minutes of light. Maybe if it, you've been using it all the time. It's more like, you know, half an hour of shaking. Anyway, if you have a reciprocating saw, that's really the kind of shaking that these things need, and the power switch on this is really difficult. So we can see if I can get this out of here. Let's do it like that. We just did that kind of shaking. We're actually getting some somewhat of an amount of light out of it. Let's go ahead and give it just a bit more shaking here and see what we can do see if it really gets much brighter than this let me take a second let's actually give it a real effort this will do up to uh, 50 uh, strokes a second on this saw let's see hopefully this blade doesn't get too crazy doing that but we're gonna really hit it with some charge All right, it's uh, the tape's done. Okay, let's see how bright it is. We can actually see that the power switches glow in the dark, which is kind of neat. I thought that's a kind of an interesting effect. God, that's sticky. So we can't get this. So here's the amount of light. I mean, that was using a, a sawzall at 3,000 strokes a second, and still, I mean, uh, I understand why these never sold. Anyway, let's take a. At the end of this review, I kind of want to take a 
get the magnets out of this. So we have another tool that we're going to go ahead and use on this flashlight, which is this oscillating tool. They're, at, they're just perfect for cutting apart plastic stuff. For those of you who are curious, that was the Milwaukee 6536 13 amp Orbital Super Sawzall. In my opinion, Peak Sawzall. They have the 15 amp ones now, but you know, the whole, all the extra electronics for the constant speed and the variable speed dial. None of the variable speed dials work great. I did do a review on that. We did chew this up a little bit doing that Sawzall action. This is a plastic cap over the bottom. Or, you know, neoprene cap, and then there's one magnet. I may not be able to get those end magnets out. I'm just going to go and cut it off right there. Now, the great thing about oscillating tools is that you can take any oscillating blade and just use a grinder to turn it into a knife blade. Uh, it makes, uh, it's very ex aggressive at scraping stuff. Amazingly aggressive. Oscillating tools are really kind of the forgotten tool. I do recommend this Makita. I've had Bosch's, I've had DeWalt, Porter Cables, Harbor Freight's. Uh, the most annoying thing is that, uh, you really need a very heavy-duty spindle on these oscillating tools, otherwise it develop play, and the blade doesn't go back and forth. Always make sure that when you have one that it is absolutely dead tight. These Makitas, this like TM3010C, awesome, awesome or, or oscillating tool. And let me demonstrate it. I have it on a medium speed. I'm actually going to try to cut around. There's an inner tube that holds the magnet, and I'm just going to try to cut that outer shell off here. <laughs> And voila. See, that's what's beautiful about oscillating tools. Doing something like that in your hands with any other tool just not only would be pretty unsafe, would be basically impossible. These things are uh, pretty amazing. And so let's see if we can... Oh, I see. I have to get the front part off. I see. It all comes out the other side. We did just lose our magnet. This is a couple dollars worth of magnet. This is actually a very nice one. Uh, on these... What are this called? I always forget Night Star. For some reason, I always forget it. The Night Star has always had these high grade cylindrical magnets, so that's always worth it just by itself. We can see that on the ends, it doesn't just bounce against the magnet, it also has uh, a little rubber bumper here. If we pull it out, oh wow, that just came unglued. That was pretty easy. So there's our rubber bumper or a silicone bumper glued on top of a magnet. Voila. Looks like I have to cut off the top. I'm actually going to give this tool a little bit more juice, go a little faster. Ooh, that's pretty loud. Let me. Wow, the plastic on the top part was like three sixteenths of an inch thick. There was one video where somebody ran over one of these with a car, and I can see why. That was some amazingly thick plastic. Now let's see if we can't get this whole contraption out of here. Here we are, we have it apart. Let me zoom in just so you can see the internal parts here. And uh, it turns out that it, these were quality. I mean, a Japanese-made supercapacitor, it's actually a 1.5 farad, which is amazing. Amazing amount of storage in this little unit here, but it's only a maximum of 5 volts. So there's a close-up look of the magnetic switch. If we can get it to focus, you can see that it really is two little bars that have, you know, are made out of steel or something that responds to magnetism. And when you get a magnet near it, they come together. I don't know if we can actually see it move or not with this magnet. Let's see. I don't think we can. It's really hard to do. Anyway, I kind of just wanted to do a review of one of these flashlights and uh, tear it down so people could see what's inside and kind of get an idea of how uh, it was well designed, high quality components. It's just, it's just not effective. You're working against too much physics there. You're not going to be able to shake up enough raw energy to really get a usable amount of light. 
even if you use a reciprocating saw at 3,000 strokes a minute. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.